Hi, this is Janani. I'm an engineer at Uber and today I'm here to talk about how Uber handles New Year's Eve. So a little bit about myself. So at some point in time, I've been working in the same campus but for uh, VMware. And uh, then I uh, moved to Amazon. I was there for four years help to help build DynamoDB. And one fine morning, I woke up and I'm like, I hate this weather. And <laughs> that was in Seattle. So I, and then I decided to follow the sun. And now I'm at Uber in San Francisco. So uh, in the past one year, uh, I've been uh, I've worked in three different teams in Uber. And right now we uh, right now I work in Rider Pricing, which is part of Fares. So uh, in our team, we uh, help come up with strategies which will help different Uber products uh, to come up with a pricing structure. So to talk about New Year's Eve, so what is uh, what is so important about New Year's Eve for Uber? So to draw an analogy, what is Christmas Eve for Amazon is what is New Year's Eve for Uber. Throughout the year, the um, products team, the services team, everyone works together to make sure that our infrastructure is resilient enough when it comes to the time of uh, handling the load that happens during New Year's Eve. So to put things in perspective, I'm going to show a time-lapse video of the number of trips taken in Uber throughout the course of four years. And this is at the time of New Year's Eve. So if you look at the left top corner, starting from 2013, uh, when, we were, when we had about a few um, thousand requests, we have now grown to about uh, close to a million requests in just a specific geographical area. So one of the side effects which comes as part of this kind of scale is outages. We have had our fair share of outages. There was one time where our surge backend snapped, and within a matter of a uh, few seconds, we uh, lost significant amount of revenue. And then we started a hard look at our infrastructure and made sure that it is fault tolerant. There have been cases where our storage service was not able to handle load the trip volume, and that is the reason for the birth of SchemaLess, which is our in-house NoSQL data store. There have also been cases because of our microservices architecture where uh, because of a failure in one of these services, it causes a butterfly effect and then causes the rest of the services which depend on it to fail. And then we uh, put some uh, circuit breakers in place so we can identify and then uh, keep, the, uh, keep the outages in check. So one of the crucial part of uh, preventing outages is to make sure that we load test our infrastructure continuously so that we can prevent and then fix these uh, problems for potential bottlenecks. So uh, some companies come up with a uh, standalone test fleet. And this means that we invest in a significant amount of, we invest in uh, getting uh, hardware which is very similar to the production fleet. And also there are a bunch of engineers who are continuously working on improving the framework. And there are companies who go for um, off-peak hour testing. This will mean that we are not necessarily testing the same usage pattern that we see in production. And some companies go for on-demand cloud-based testing, but this will mean that we may not be testing it in the same kind of hardware that we use for our production fleet. And in Uber, our approach to this is different, and we also came up with a uh, different form of uh, how, to, how we want to do the load testing. So this is because the load testing uh, requirements in Uber are different, where we wanted to test the production service, and we wanted to be able to test it any time we want to. And we wanted to make it as a platform level change, rather than leaving the services to come up with their own way of load testing. So th this will become more apparent as to why we came up with this approach when we start looking at our architecture. So in our high, high level of uh, service architecture, we can see that there are a bunch of clients which talk to the serv services. And the services, in turn, will use a data store layer. And then we have, uh, and then we have the uh, storage layer, which is, uh, which is beneath that. So if we pay close attention to the arrows, we can see that the test traffic touches the same parts of the system as, it, as it's touched by the production traffic. So this leads to its own challenges, and that is what we were trying to address. This is the closer look at our storage layer. In a storage layer, we have storage clients, which talk to the service layer. And in the service layer, we have worker nodes and storage nodes. The worker nodes are the ones which spread out the load to different storage nodes. And the reason to have them separate is that we can horizontally scale both of these independent of each other. And whenever there is any failure of the request, then the worker nodes will also make sure that they retry those requests. If we take a closer look at the storage, storage nodes, they form storage cluster, and they are replicated within as well as across the storage cluster so that whenever there is a data center outage, we can we don't have to worry so much about the data durability.
so in our storage cluster there is a master and minions and inside this cluster we have the data sharded across multiple partitions what this means is that when the production traffic and the test traffic hits the same storage layer it will mean that the test traffic and production traffic can live in the same shard so the challenges that come with this is an engineer can try to create a test strip and this will end up in the same shard as a production traffic and if it happens to have the same primary key as the production traffic then it will end up overriding the data that is a data integrity issue and there have been cases where we uh, want to purge the data after the load testing is done and by accident we can clear we can uh, delete data which is both production and test which happens to be in the same shard that is a serious no no and on top of all of this since the load testing framework is going to crank up the load by 3x and 4x to push the limits it can so happen that at some point we might bring down the production fleet this is like this is the exact same reason we are trying to do the load testing and <laughs> yeah the way we are and the way we fix this by using storage layer multi tenancy what this means is that in the storage layer there are different tenants which coexist with the guarantee that there is resource isolation with this change this is how our new architecture looks like there is a storage layer multiplexing which happens right over there and if we take a closer look in our clients the clients have now become intelligent enough to differentiate between production traffic and test traffic and finally they will be able to redirect it to the specific shard one, um, depending on whether it is production or test this will mean that for test and production they can coexist in the same cluster at some times they can even coexist in the same storage nodes but the data itself doesn't coexist in the same shard and the way the client becomes intelligent is by taking a hint from the service layer so the services pass in a header information which differentiate whether it is a test data or production data and using this header we will be able to make the distinction at the storage layer the reason to do it as part of the header is that this becomes language agnostic in uber we have services which are written in go java and python so just because the storage layer changed and it has more abilities the service layer doesn't need to change with this change one of our services started load testing our uh, service and within a matter of 2 weeks we were able to identify lot of performance issues fix them in time and this time around we had zero outages during nye thank you